welcome back to another episode of Parks and Tech. Uh, today we are taking a look at the Power Egg X, uh, but instead of it being in drone mode, uh, this time we are currently in camcorder mode, um, or tripod mode, uh, if you will. Uh, it actually is currently on a tripod, and um, it is tracking me as I move around here, it's doing a, doing a pretty darn good job. Uh, the video you're actually seeing, of course, is from the Power Egg X itself, and the audio is actually being recorded directly through the SD card through your phone. Um, so again, it is able to send that audio uh, directly from your phone uh, to the SD card so that it is automatically already synced up. So, how does it sound? Okay, guys and girls, so uh, real quick here, I'm going to go on ahead and show you how to um, actually have this uh, set up uh, so that it can work with your phone and your app. Uh, you did already see how it can uh, get transformed um, into the uh, mode that it's currently in, which is camcorder or tripod mode. Uh, but let's go on ahead and make sure we have everything all set because this has to be done a little bit differently because you don't have a transmitter to plug into. So first things first, turn on the camera. go through and still do its little calibration settings there. Okay, and then once it is turned on, you're going to have to go to your Wi-Fi settings. And wait for it to find the Power Egg Wi-Fi network. Now I did notice that sometimes it does take a little while uh, to be able to find it, so uh, so just bear with it. And there it is, it's egg X. And now I've already typed in the password, but um, the preset password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so right now it says uh, connected, uh, no internet. And uh, one thing I noticed too, specifically on Android, uh, it always tells you from the Android system that the Egg X has no internet access, so you have to tap for more options. Um, do you want to stay connected to the network? Uh, and you have to hit yes, or it won't work properly. We'll go ahead and go into the Vision 2 app. And it'll say Power X device connected. So then tap in access device. And there it is. And, uh, and there we are. Uh, now I do have this uh, currently filming in 4K60, um, and this actually is also, uh, just so you guys know, this is the audio um, from the uh, mic that is on my shirt, uh, just so that you guys are aware. Um, I'll go on ahead and make sure I put up on the screen when the audio and the video is coming from the Power Egg X, so that you guys are very much aware of, uh, of what's going on. So. You know, there won't be any uh, any confusion there. Okay, so quickly, let's go ahead and take a look at the app. Um, up at the top, you see your Wi-Fi connection to the camera itself. You have the camera's battery as well. Currently, it is at 92%. Um, right over there, you will see uh, a microphone button. So you can uh, basically tell it to record audio. You just tap that button. Uh, if it is having a slash through it, then obviously it is not recording any audio uh, through your phone. Uh, tap it again, and it will go on ahead and actually record the audio through your phone uh, directly to the SD card if that's something that you are interested in. These three little dots over here, uh, just some of your general settings um, in terms of uh, the app itself. Uh, you also have some uh, some gimbal settings that you can mess around with, but currently right now I have everything on auto. Uh, of course we have our, our screen there in terms of what the camera itself is seeing. Uh, down here we have our little control where we can actually control the gimbal manually if that's something that you would like to do. And um, it does have a pretty far range, so it can go pretty high up. You can kind of see the top of the drone there actually. And it can go pretty far left to right. Um, now if you get all discombobulated like I just did there, if you double tap on that white circle, 
it actually recenters um, and uh, and readjusts. So let me tilt that back up. There we go. Uh, directly to the right of that, we have our different modes. So right now I have it in follow mode. If you tap that once, it goes into FPV mode. Tap it again, it goes into lock mode. And then tap it in, tap it again, and it goes back to uh, to follow mode. Uh, so down at the bottom, we have a couple of the little modes we can go do. We have slow motion, we have video, and we have photo. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at all three of those um, here today as well. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and um, first take a look at photo, or excuse me, take a look at video mode. And um, you'll see our little start recording button. And then, of course, you'll see our settings button down here to the bottom right. So let's go ahead and tap those. And you can see here that I have everything currently set to auto. You could change it to manual. Um, you can uh, change the ISO, the shutter, and the EV as well. If you tap the camera icon up at the top, uh, there's where you can change your video size. Um, I have it currently set to 4K60, uh, but you can also change it to just 1080. So it looks like we only have really two modes there. We have full HD at 1080p, and then we have 4K um, at, uh, at 60 as well our settings button. Um, here, uh, this is actually kind of neat. So, so gesture control, that's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so basically, um, looking at these different gestures we can do uh, to have it automatically start following you. Uh, if you just wave at the camera, it'll automatically start following you. Uh, make a peace sign, it will take a photo. Thumbs up, uh, it will start or stop recording. And a group photo is, uh, is the okay sign there. So that's pretty cool. You can change down here the uh, mirror image, uh, save the original time-lapse video, histogram, headlight, um, the watermark. Uh, I'm going to turn the watermark off. Uh, there's anti-flicker, and you can turn your grid on if that's something that you'd like to do. And of course, you can change your storage location as well. You're able to format the SD card, reset camera parameters, and format the aircraft memory. Uh, because again, this does have 8 gigs of onboard memory as well. Um, so I did turn gesture control on, so I'm going to go ahead and show you that here real quick. Okay, so if I go on ahead and wave at the camera, you guys can see it is currently tracking me. So I will uh, start recording on the app there. And again, we'll go on ahead and just kind of walk around the yard a little bit. You can see I'm getting a little bit, a little bit further away, and it's still got me pretty good. Now it is a bright, sunny day. But I'm really not wearing bright colors, so it is doing a pretty darn good job of, uh, of tracking me, keeping me in the frame. Let's get pretty close and see what happens. So yeah. When you get a little close, it does get the top of the drone itself in the frame, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm going to go on ahead and yeah, you guys are going to get to see, uh, see me run here a little bit. So I know I'm going to be running, of course, with my phone in my hand, but I'll let you see how well it does with something moving a little bit quicker than just walking. And uh, seemed to have worked pretty well. It did catch me uh, still in the frame, which was good. And uh, it didn't lose me. And I know a lot of other drones might have, not drones, a lot of other active tracks on different cameras and, and even some, some drones themselves typically lose you when you start running so it's pretty cool of course I wasn't going very fast I can't run very fast if you guys haven't noticed so let's go ahead and make uh, the peace sign here and see if it takes a photo That's pretty cool. It does the uh, does the countdown? So let's go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. 
Now I just gave it the, uh, the thumbs up there so it started recording. Of course, it's not tracking me right now, but of course, if I decide to wave at the camera, it will start tracking me. So even a little bit further away, let's see if it'll stop the recording. Maybe it won't let me do any other gestures now that I'm in the active track mode, so let's give it the thumbs up. And uh, it's not working from back there. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Still not stopping. There, it finally stopped. So it appears it doesn't work from all the way back here, but let's, let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. Give it a couple seconds and it's not doing anything. So it looks like for some of the gestures you might have to be a little on the closer side. But let's actually try the tracking mode. That one should be an easier one for it to get. There we go. So that one, uh, that one did actually work. It did recognize me. You might have to maneuver your your hand around a little bit. But that one does seem to uh, to work okay. So we're back to track. Okay, so the only one we haven't tried yet uh, was the group photo uh, gesture. So let's go ahead and try that now. I don't have, obviously, anybody around to take a group photo with, but let's go ahead and try it anyway. So, I took a photo, but I don't know what makes that one any different than the other ones. Um, maybe, if it, maybe if it detects more people in, maybe it'll move and kind of do like a, a picture, picture, picture almost. Um, but you never know. I guess I just don't have enough people here to try that one out too well. So, so what we're going to do now here is try out the slow motion mode. Uh, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to run uh, again here and uh, have it film me in, in slow motion. So I'm going to um, start the recording on the device. So it is recording right now in, uh, in slow motion. So I'm going to wave and uh, it's now tracking me. So let's run again. Run back. And uh, that should have been in slow motion. We could even try to jump up a little bit. Maybe we'll even do it back here. So that should have been in slow motion. Okay, we'll go ahead and do a little little time lapse. Let me cancel this out here. And I'm just gonna leave it on its base settings here.
Okay, guys, uh, so let's go ahead and put it into photo mode. Uh, now, I know I took some pictures already by using some of the gestures, uh, but I did want to show you some of the settings here. So uh, currently it's in photo mode, so let's tap on the settings. So right now we have everything set to auto. Again, you can change it to manual if you want. Uh, you can change the ISO, the shutter, shutter, and the EV. So let's tap that camera button. So in photo mode, we can select either single photo, HDR photo, burst mode, AEB, or a timed photo. So right now I'll just have it in a single photo, 16 by nine, JPEG, everything else will leave the same. So we'll go on ahead and, and here is a standard photo. Okay, so now we'll go on ahead and put it into HDR photo. So this will be an HDR photo. Let's try burst mode. So let's have it do seven. So let's go ahead and try AEB. We'll set that to five. And of course we can do a timed photo as well. So let's go ahead and do one for, uh, I don't know, seven seconds. You'll see it counts down on the screen so you can get into position. So of course, uh, also in uh, the settings of the photos, uh, you can change the photo size, you can change it to four by three or 16 by nine, depending on what you want. Your photo format, uh, you can do raw, you can do JPEG plus raw as well, so that's pretty cool. Um, you can go on ahead and change the, uh, the white balance as well if you want. So there's sunny, so it is a sunny day, so let's go on ahead and turn sunny on. And uh, let's take a picture here in sunny mode. I left it in timed photo so I'm going to go back to HDR so let's try HDR and on sunny and let's see what happens here And of course, down at the bottom we have style, so you can uh, you can change it to whatever you want. So if you're taking a standard photo, a landscape photo, neutral, or custom. So I'm going to leave it on landscape, and I'll actually walk back over here and have it do a landscape HDR.
Okay folks, uh, so right now I am actually holding uh, the camera, as you can see, and uh, we are walking. So you can kind of see if this footage is stable or not, and how it looks while in true handheld camera mode. I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit here. So let's go ahead and try a small running test to see how stabilized this video is. So that was me running with it. Go ahead and record some video in FPV mode. And of course, FPV mode means that if I tilt the camera, it also tilts the gimbal. So it doesn't keep the horizon perfectly level. But everything else should still be stabilized. Except your left and right or roll movements. Still stabilized though. Gimbal lock means that if I tilt this camera this way, you can see the top of the camera or top of the drone came into frame there. It keeps everything straightforward. So you can see the camera gimbal is staying forward. So it's a gimbal lock. Okay, uh, so just because I know that uh, I'm going to be asked this question uh, is can this uh, drone be, or camera, can be used as a vlogging camera? Well, um, on a tripod, I would say go for it. Handheld facing towards you like this? Meh, not so much. Not so much, folks. Um, I mean, you guys can really do whatever you want with it, of course, if this is something that you prefer, but hmm, this definitely isn't for me. and. I'll be honest, after a little while of holding this, I don't know if this would... Mm, well, eh, no, I don't like this. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Down here to the left of the record a button um, is your little play button where you can actually go into your uh, your gallery and uh, and see everything that you got going on there. So, um, you know, you can watch your videos, uh, you can... Uh, see what that sounds like and take a look at your photos and so forth as well so that's definitely a definitely a good feature uh, you know to have uh, in the app as well uh, to be able to, to do that kind of on the fly and uh, even transfer them to your phone and upload them to social media if that's something that uh, you know that you you choose to do one other thing I want to point out uh, in the PowerX in camcorder mode uh, is that the battery itself is supposed to last about roughly about three hours or so um, is what it's uh, what it's saying so um, you know, I've actually been uh, doing a little little recording here for for quite some time and having the uh, the camera on a good bit of that time, um, and it's only at 75 percent. So, but again, you you are supposed to get roughly about three hours uh, worth of battery uh, in uh, camcorder mode. So that's uh, pretty cool, pretty impressive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that was just a Paragex has to offer uh, in camcorder uh, mode, at least as of now. Uh, they could always go ahead and add more uh, features via firmware, things like that, um, uh, updates to the app. Uh, but all in all, I, I think it works very well. Uh, I think that leaving it on a tripod and having it uh, track and follow you is probably the, the coolest thing about it, uh, for sure. Uh, and the fact, too, that it can also uh, record the audio uh, directly from your phone. Um, a downside to that, of course, is also actually having to hold the phone. Um, so you will always have to have your phone on when uh, you are using this in camcorder mode or in tripod mode. Um, of course, some of the countdowns for photos gives you some time to, you know, hide it or do whatever it is you need to do. But um, for the most part, it, uh, it it works very very well. Um, the, the the track on it is incredible. Um, After track is 100% amazing. I think it's awesome. I think, again, that's the coolest feature about uh, the PowerX in camcorder mode, uh, at least, again, as of right now. 
Uh, I haven't had a chance to test it out uh, while it's in drone mode, but apparently that is supposed to work very, very well. And if that works just as well as this does, then we're going to be in for, uh, for a real treat once we uh, have that into active track mode. So again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to watch this video. Uh, please make sure you hit that thumbs up if you found any of this content useful. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also hit the bell uh, as well so you can be notified of any future content as well. And man, is there going to be a lot of it. So, Alright guys, again, really appreciate you watching. And uh, we will catch you in the next one.